Hello everyone and welcome to another Commander Tactics Deck Tech. My name is Pope. In this video we're going to be building around the buy a box promo from Theros Beyond Death and that is the Orzhov God himself, Athreos, Shroud Veiled. Athreos has the potential to be an extremely powerful commander and if you're interested in seeing what you can do without any limitations, we actually released a second video alongside this one that pushes this deck to the limits. So after this, go check that video out just to see how versatile you can build this legendary creature. Athreos Shroud Veiled costs 4, a white, and a black, has indestructible, and as long as your devotion to black and white is under 7, he isn't a creature. But where he really shines is in the last ability. At our end step, we put a coin counter on any creature on the board, and when that creature dies or gets put into exile, we return that creature to our side of the field. For this deck, we're going to be focusing on getting huge creatures onto the battlefield, bringing them back using Athreos' ability and other powerful spells, and recurring all their powerful abilities for maximum value. And along the way, we're going to be using our life as a resource with this deck, so we're going to have a hefty life gain package to ensure we can keep our engine moving. And this entire deck can actually be picked up today for less than $50. But without any further ado, let's get things started with the big hitting creatures we're going to be playing and reanimating, including Ashen Rider, Angel of Despair, and Lotless Giant. Each of these creatures bring with them a super powerful ETB effect. Ashen Rider, whenever it enters or when it dies, so we're going to get to get both effects with it, we're going to exile any target permanent. This can be a land, an enchantment, or even a planeswalker, whatever we need to deal with. Angel of Despair, very hefty mana cost. 3, 2 white, and 2 black. When it enters the battlefield, we get to destroy any target permanent. So again, whatever our problem on the board is, our biggest threat, we can just knock it out. And Lotlith Giant has undergrowth. Whenever it enters the battlefield, it's going to deal 1 damage to target opponent for each creature in our graveyard. This deck does run a ton of creatures, and we actually want them in our graveyard as much as we can so we can reanimate them. I should note, you'll notice our CMC of creatures is very high in this deck. But that's because we're not going to be casting them for their normal cost usually. We're going to be bringing them back from the graveyard. Next we have Butcher of Malakir, Sun Titan, and Villas Broker of Blood. These value creatures are going to offer so much for this deck. Butcher of Malakir is a dictate on a stick. Whenever Butcher of Malakir or another creature you control dies, each opponent is going to have to sacrifice a creature. This is a great way for us to get those creatures our opponents have with coin counters on them into the graveyard. Then we have Sun Titan, maybe one of the most iconic white spells played in Commander. For 6 mana we get this giant 6-6. Six, six. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, we may return target permanent card with converted mana cost 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. And Villas Broker of Blood coming straight out of core 20. An 8-8 eight, eight flyer with one of the most insane abilities we've seen as of late. For a black, we can pay 2 life and target creature is going to get minus 1, minus 1 until the end of turn. But whenever we lose life, we draw that many cards. So whenever we activate this ability, we get to draw two cards at minimum, and we can continue to activate it as long as we have the mana to pay for it. Next up, we have options for getting creatures into our graveyard when we need them with Maw of the Obsidot, Carrion Feeder, Buried Alive, and Final Parting. Maw of the Obsidot lets us sack creatures whenever we want for free, and when we do, all creatures on our side of the board are going to get plus one, plus one until the end of turn. Carry and Feeder, another free sack outlet. Whenever we sack a creature, it's going to get a plus one counter on it. Buried Alive is one of the best pieces in this deck. Going to let us search up three of our biggest creatures and put them into our graveyard to reanimate them as soon as possible. And then final parting for three and two black. This combines in Tomb and Demonic Tutor for a powerful spell. Let's us search for two cards, put one of them in our hand and the other into our graveyard. And then lastly, we have two cards that are going to really just help this deck tick with Tasa Karlov and Strionic Resonator. Tasa Karlov, or better known as Death Harmonicon. For two, a white and a black, we get this legendary creature. If a creature we control dies, causing a triggered ability to trigger, that ability is going to trigger an additional time. And of course, creature tokens we control have Vigilance and Lifelink. We have tons of death triggers in this deck, and Tasa is just going to double up, giving us that extra value that we're looking for. And Stryonic Resonator, this two-cost artifact may be the single best card in the deck. 
For two, we can tap it, copy triggered ability you control, and you may choose new targets for the copy. Now, whenever we move to our end step and Athreos is on board, we're going to copy his coin counter, giving us two creatures that are going to return whenever they leave the battlefield. This is so powerful, and if we can get him onto some big, heavy hitters, then our board state will just become unstoppable. But now let's take a look at all the spells that we're going to be casting to help bring our powerful creatures back from the graveyard. Starting things off with three enchantments with Animate Dead, Diabolic Servitude, and the Eldest Reborn. Animate Dead for one and a black, so only two mana. We get to bring any creature back from the graveyard to the battlefield, and it gets minus one, minus zero. Diabolic Servitude. Whenever it enters the battlefield, we're going to return a creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. And whenever that creature dies, it's going to be exiled, and we get to bring Diabolic Servitude back to our hand. Now, if we do get a coin counter onto that creature, then we will get Servitude back in our hand and the creature back onto the battlefield, allowing us to reanimate another creature and repeat the cycle. Eldest Reborn, a great saga from Dominaria. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker on the first stage, then each opponent's going to discard a card, and on the last phase we're going to put any creature or planeswalker from any graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. Next we have three sorceries going to help us bring back our creatures. Beacon of Unrest, Dread Return, and Ever After. Beacon of Unrest for three and two black, so five mana. We're going to put any target artifact or creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. Then we shuffle Beacon of Unrest back into our library so we can use it again and again. Dread Return, return a target creature card from the graveyard to the battlefield. Then we can flash it back by sacrificing three creatures. Now this is very powerful because we could have tokens we want to use, or if we have creatures we want to get off the battlefield, Dread Return can help make that happen. And then ever after, we get to bring back two creatures, they enter the battlefield as black zombies, and then we put ever after back on the bottom of our library. Next up, we have Exhum, Victimize, and Unburial Rites. Three more spells going to help us bring back our biggest and baddest creatures. Exhum, for only one in red, allows each player to put a creature card from his or her graveyard onto the battlefield. Ideally, we're going to have a big creature in our graveyard early, and our opponents won't be able to capitalize when we cast this. Victimize, we sacrifice one creature to bring two creatures back, and Unburial Rites, just a simple reanimation for four and a black, but it does have flashback for three and a white. And lastly, rounding out our reanimation spells, we have three reanimating creatures with Phyrexian Delver, Karmic Guide, and Revelark. Phyrexian Delver says whenever it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield, we lose life equal to its CMC. And then we have Karmic Guide and Revelark, our only two white reanimators. Karmic Guide, whenever it enters the battlefield, we can bring back any creature from our graveyard to the battlefield. And Revelark, whenever it leaves the battlefield, we can return two creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield as long as they have power two or less. I should mention here, Revelark and Karmic Guide are one of our win conditions in combination with anything that drains on death, so like a Blood Artist effect. And if you don't know exactly how that works, I'll link a video to my Tasa Karlov deck, which I've done in the past, and it breaks down this combo thoroughly so you know exactly what you're looking for and how to execute it. And since along the way we will be using our life as a resource, we do have a full package of cards that are going to help us keep our life total high and what better way to do that than by draining the life straight from our opponents back to us with creatures like Falcon Wrath Noble, Zulaport Cutthroat, and Cruel Celebrant. These are powerful combo pieces in this deck given how much we are going to be sacrificing things. Falcon Wrath Noble is going to ping one player for one life and we're going to gain one life whenever any creature dies. But Zulaport Cutthroat and Cruel Celebrant going to ping each opponent whenever any of our creatures die. With all the sacrificing and death that will surely be happening on our side of the field, these will do tons of damage and help you win games outright. Next up we have some help coming in from White with Soul Warden, Sutra Priest, and Camball Console of Allocation. Soul Warden simply for one white mana, whenever any creature enters the battlefield we are going to gain one life. And Sutra Priest, whenever another creature enters the battlefield under our control, we gain a life. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, we get to ping them for one. 
and then Camball Console of Allocation. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, that player is going to lose two life and we're going to gain two life off of it. Sutra Priest and Camball are the type of creature that if they go undealt with will gain you a ton of life and do tons of damage. Coming in next we have Pontiff of Blight, Necromancer's Covenant, and Fumigate. Pontiff of Blight, a 2-7 body zombie cleric, has Extort, so whenever we cast any spell we can pay an Orzhov mana, so a white or a black, and if we do, each opponent's going to lose a life and we're going to gain that much life, and each other creature we have is also going to have Extort. Multiple instances of Extort compounds rapidly, and it is going to help us close out games if it isn't dealt with. Necromancer's Covenant is a 6 cost enchantment and whenever it enters the battlefield, we're going to exile all the creature cards from one player's graveyard. Then we get to put a 2-2 black zombie creature into play for each card exiled this way, and zombies we control will have lifelink. Creating 4 or 5 zombies is kind of the floor with this card, and getting all that lifelink back, assuming they stick around, is going to help us maintain that good life total. And then Fumigate, a board wipe with life gain added. Destroy all creatures on the board. We're going to gain one life for each creature destroyed this way. This is great because if we have any coin counters on from Athreos, we're going to get those creatures back after the board wipe and be ahead and ready to set up and move forward. And then lastly, a few bombs in the life gain area. Debt to the Deathless, Grey Merchant of Asphodel, and Sanguine Bond. Debt to the Deathless, we're going to put X, white, white, black, black down. Each opponent's going to lose 2 times X, and we're going to gain the life loss this way. If we can generate a ton of mana, we can win games with Debt to the Deathless. It can be a finisher. Grey Merchant of Asphodel, whenever it enters the battlefield, we're going to deal damage to each opponent equal to our devotion to black, and then gain life equal to the amount of damage done. Reanimating Grey Merchant is one easy way to win games, assuming we can bring him back over and over, getting that ping damage and keeping our life high. And Sanguine Bond, a combo piece in itself, whenever we gain life, target opponent loses that much life. You can see we're going to be gaining a ton of life with all the cards in this deck, so this will help us ping down the opponents as fast as possible. But now that we've seen how this deck functions and how we're going to operate it, let's take a look at what else is inside the 99, starting things off with our removal and control. In this deck, we are running 5 targeted removal spells, 2 board wipes, and a ton of edict effects to force our opponents to sacrifice their biggest and best stuff. Our card draw and advantage in this deck comes down to about 7 spells, going to let us draw or bring multiple things back, and again, all the reanimation we are doing, that is going to be our big advantage with this deck. Our ramp in this deck can be broken down to about 7 spells, almost all artifacts, helping us generate the mana that we're going to need to cast our big spells. And then winning with this deck can be broken down into a few different ways. Number one, we can drain our opponent's life total or gain tons of life and make them die through the enchantment Sanguine Bond. If we can reanimate a lot of our big powerful ETB effects like Grey Merchant, that is going to kill our opponents quickly. And if we get the right amount of mana, we can put it all into a debt to the deathless and just kill everyone at once. And if none of that works and everything does line up, we can do the Karmic Guide Revel Art combo, infinitely looping the ETB and death trigger of things like Zulaport Cutthroat or Falcon Wrath Noble. And if you're looking for upgrades for this deck, then look no further than this very channel, because along with this video, as I mentioned earlier, we've released an upgraded deck tech for a $500 budget that includes awesome, powerful cards at a little bit of a steeper price. So definitely go check that one out after you finish this video and let us know what you think. But that is going to do it for this budget-friendly version of Athreos Shroud Veiled. I've loved Athreos since God of Passage, one of my favorite current commander decks to play, and I think Athreos Shroud Veiled is going to be super cool to build as well. But what cards would you add into this deck? What do you think I should take out? What would you put in? Let us know down in the comments section. If you enjoyed this video though, and you want to know when our next videos come out, make sure you hit that like button and make sure you subscribe. Our next deck tech will be here every Friday, 9 a.m. Central. If you're a Twitter user, head on over there, drop us a follow at EDH Tactics. Thanks so much for watching guys, and we'll see you for the next one.